it's Gabrielle. Uh, we've been talking a lot about social communication and it occurred to me I had not talked about eye contact yet. And so today we're going to talk about that um, because it is one of these buzzwords that therapists use a lot. Um, actually, like early intervention agencies use a lot. You see a lot about eye contact. Um, and it's because eye contact as a um, body language as a form of social communication of a way of being with another person, right? The way we do that is we look at people. Okay, great. So um, eye contact is important. Now, the, the, there are a couple of different things that we can, um, that we can t say about this, which is eye contact is not staring at somebody continuously. Um, and the video is a little bit difficult to show, but when you talk to somebody, you actually don't give them full eye contact all the time. That would be perceived as aggressive, rude, weird. Um, so eye contact, you know, it's one of these things where we want just enough, but not too much. Um, we want to look away. So I, I encourage you to experiment with this a little bit next time you're in a conversation face-to-face <laughs> -face with somebody. Um, s notice what your method of eye contact is. Are you, how long are you looking for the, at that person? Um, how long are they looking at you? Uh, it's a funny thing to play with. Here's the thing I want to say about it as it regards young children who are having social communication difficulties. Sometimes eye contact is painful um, because eye contact is a sensory experience, right? We're looking at somebody. In order to look at somebody and tolerate that, in your brain, in your body, you have to have a brain that's able to filter out a lot of stuff because faces are constantly moving. There's a reason we talk about micro expressions, right? That means our face is moving and changing all the time. And so asking a child whose brain is not filtering well to look at that moving target can be overwhelming to them. And sometimes they can't speak and look at the same time. And so this is just something I really want you guys to remember is it might, you're, you're, the child who's not looking at an adult might be making a choice about, and, and probably not a conscious choice, but an intuitive choice about being able to listen and answer or look. It might come down to either of those two things because in the moment, they can't actually look and listen at the same time, or they can't actually look and talk at the same time. It's too much. It's like, um, you know, uh, trying to deliver a lecture when you haven't had any sleep, you haven't had any coffee, and you're not prepared. Um, it's that kind of feeling, and that, as we know, puts you into fight or flight or freeze, um, and nothing is happening there. You're just in, in protection mode. And so when we try to, you know, I've seen this and I have done it in my, in my career, you know, where you grab a child's face and push them toward you. Don't do that. Just don't. <laughs> it's a violation. It's an intrusion. Um, and we shouldn't be doing it. Uh, there are ways to get, and I've included some in the, um, in the accompanying sort of writing with this video, um, there are ways to get kids to pay attention to us, to increase eye contact, to improve it. Um, and for sure it's important, but it's, uh, not at the expense of, um, of a child being in relationship with us and not at the expense of maybe some, some language skills that might come online. For example, when a child is using their peripheral vision, um, they might be better able to, to formulate and talk when they're not looking at you. So just some things to think about in terms of eye contact. Until next time, take care.